High speed drag screaming runs and big head shakes are signatures of tonight's species. Tiger stripes, sharp teeth, and incredible table fare are a few others. You're right about that. Get out the bent butts, the lever drags, because we're talking Wahoo on this week's Florida Insider Fishing Report, which starts now. Welcome to the Florida Insider Fishing Report, presented by Yamaha. You're watching the Florida Insider Fishing Report, and you're in luck because not only do we have Captain Jim Ross from the Real Legend Central East region filling in for Rick, but we're also just in time for the moon, which means Wahoo, right Jim? I am so ready, I cannot wait. This is a great show, and this is one of the best species to put on the table, so I really like both aspects the athleticism of the fish and the table fare. Exactly, and I know some of our captains have some recipes they're gonna share with us a little later. But I know a lot of our captains are also ready to get us high speeding, but first, let's say hi to Dave Farrell, who might have a thing or two to say about the who's. I hey, love them. I love them. I, you just if, love them. When I go oh fishing goodness. offshore at Cape Canaveral, there's two fish oh I wanna God. catch. I wanna catch a dolphin and I wanna catch a wahoo. Those are the guys I'm after, and we're gonna show you a few tricks to catch them. Sounds good. Uh, I can, you can add me to that list too. Yeah. Those are my favorite as well. All right, well, if there's anyone who's in with the Who crowd in the front runner boats Northeast region, it's Captain Tommy <laughs> Terringer. The best is yet to come, right, Tommy? That's right, Bree. I, I'm so glad that I have so many great friends that love to catch Wahoo because like Jim <laughs> was saying, they're fantastic to eat, one of my favorite fish to eat. And we have a fantastic Wahoo fishery here in the front runner boats northeast region. You know, fishing for Wahoo, it's a big deal for us. And although right now is not really the best time of year to target them, you can catch them year round. And the best time to catch Wahoo in my regions, typically during the cooler months, um, from about November, December through March. Now, most anglers are gonna troll for those Wahoo. They're starting at about somewhere around 140 feet and they work on out to the ledge and even beyond. Now you're looking for a few things out there. Uh, could be concentrations of bait, especially near on top of any kind of structure, you know, and a good color change is something to keep your eye out for as well. If you find that good edge, you're gonna to wanna to fish that hard. The Wahoo really like that change. You know, most anglers are gonna troll a skirted ballyhoo or a variety of lures like an Islander or a Black Bart or a local favorite, a lure them in lure. That's one that our buddy Captain Gibby makes here in St. Augustine. Now you're gonna to wanna to troll ballyhoo and lures, you know, somewhere around eight to 10 knots, but a lot of anglers and especially the tournament guys uh, they like to high speed troll. Now those guys pull lures behind trolling leads at about like 15 to 18 knots. And they're typically gonna start in a little closer, like 120 feet, and then work their way on out to the ledge. Now in more recent years, the tournament guys have started getting more into the live baiting for the Wahoo. And at least a few of the big tournaments have been won recently using live bonitas for bait. I know a lot of guys have been installing tuna tubes on their boats because how successful that live baiting method has been in our region. And I got a photo here, uh, you know, talking about tournament guys. This is Ooh. my good friend and all around good dude, Tim O'Reilly with a nice 80 pound Wahoo that he caught east of Jacksonville on the gear jammer. And man, I'm sure Tim cooked that one up really. He's a great chef. He's like me, he likes to eat that Wahoo. That's an awesome fish there. You Tim. are so lucky. You now, have staying so offshore, many guys. friends, Tommy. <laughs> I know, hey, I mean, I, no doubt. I'm ready for the who, guys. Whoever's watching this, bring me the wahoo when it's ready. Come on. <laughs> now, guys, there hasn't been a whole lot of offshore fishing happening lately. You know, with the weather, the offshore guys have been, uh, that have been out, some of the snapper bite has been the go-to over the last couple of weeks. Um, the vermilion specifically, but the mangoes and the muttons are biting good as well in the 120 to 140 foot depths. The current has been really strong in the ocean. You know, it's been pretty angry, angry that is, with recent storms. So if you can find a reef with some clean water and not uh, some ripping current, you're gonna find some snapper stacked up. Those vermilion snapper, they've been big in that four to six pound range, live and dead baits, both been working well. The captains that are fishing those guys are using a double chicken rig for the bee liners as we like to call them. Now moving inshore, redfish. You know, Jim and I were talking about this earlier. We've had a nice flood tide happening this week. It's gonna continue on into the weekend. You know, we've actually had quite a few flood tides as of late with all those onshore winds and the extra rain uh, water that we've been having the last couple of weeks. The redfish have been plentiful up in the grass. Most of the fish I've been seeing, there's uh, what we call slurping those crabs off the edges of the grass. 
as opposed to really truly tailing, but there are some of those as well. Now they've been eating just about anything we've been throwing at them, uh, but the Saltwater Assassin Elite Shiner has been my go-to setup all year for those flood tide fish. It has that little slot on the top of the bait that allows the hook to lay down just enough. It keeps it completely weedless. You can toss that past the fish and ease it through the grass right over to them. Then just give it a slight little twitch and they're gonna nail it, it's game on. And I've got another picture here. Captain Cullen Traverso, he sent me this picture of his client Kyle with a nice flood tide redfish. Look how pretty that grass is in the background. Man, it's, it's a fun way to fish for them. I think I can see two or three tails now, also back there, in short <laughs> Oh yeah, you see him? <laughs> That's right. Now also in short guys, man, the snook bite, we have been uh, been great. We've had it uh, going on in the region right now. M with most, um, while most of our species seem to really not like all the fresh water, the snook seem to kind of thrive on it. I spoke to Captain Chris Herrera. He tells me they've had multiple trips this week where they're catching over 15 nice snook, some slot size fish even from Highbridge down to Tomoka. The Jay Walker and the Kane Walker Berkeley top water plugs, they've been great during the lower light hours. Um, and there's been a lot of low light with all the uh, cloud cover, but I think it's been clearing up a little bit. I think the weekend will be that way as well. A subsurface plug once the sun comes up or a first a fish bites jerk bait have both been producing some nice snook as well. Target any kind of freshwater runoff if you can find it or really any area that's just holding schools and mullet. And of course you can just listen, listen for that busting snook um, and I've got one last picture here. This is our buddy Breck with a hog of a Northeast Florida snook that he caught with me last weekend. I tell you what, Tommy, those snook are just getting farther and farther north. It's amazing that you guys are getting them. Fantastic way to lead us off today. I'm gonna take your strike zone hotspots from the Northeast region from here. Bye, Tommy. Tommy says, great snook bite from Daytona to Palm Coast. You wanna target areas holding schools of mullet and then offshore a mixed bag of snappers, trigger fish, and AJs in the 120 to 140 foot depths. All right, well, the Fish Bites East region tells a little different Wahoo story, especially with the migrating blackfin tuna and mullet. So Captain Mike Holiday, let's reel in a few who this weekend, what do you say? Well, I'm on it. It looks like it's gonna be a nice weekend too. September is one of the best months to target Wahoo in my region. They come in to feed on the juvenile blackfin tuna, the blue runners, and the mullet that are out there on the reef. And as a rule, the best wahoo fishing is on either side of the full moon, which was Wednesday this week. A lot of anglers like to fish the dawn bite, high speed by high speed trolling with lures in 200 to 400 feet of water. And they do that from like Palm Beach to just north of Jupiter Inlet or up around the Steeples area on the northern end of my region, up around Sebastian. Now that being said, you can catch wahoo any time of day. We get good numbers of fish and some really, this is probably the big fish month for Wahoo for us. A lot of the Wahoo are caught off floating objects like weed lines, boards, or even garbage bags. Um, you know, you can troll double hooked rig ballyhoo or swimming mullet, uh, put them out on number seven, eight, seven or number eight wire. Key is to get the bait down, usually anything from a, a trolling weight to a planer to a downrigger or wire line. Just get the bait below the surface and you have a better chance of getting a Wahoo. Average Wahoo in my region, 20 to 40 pounds. And I have a photo from the Salty Days charter boat out of Port St. Lucie. They got that nice Wahoo on Push Button Hill and they caught that fish on a jigging spoon, not even trolling. So, you know, the fish are out there feeding pretty regularly. The other thing we got going late September through October is, is typically when we get a nice push of bigger blackfin tuna into the region, we're starting to see the first good signs of fish into the area. The best action really is been on the southern end from in Palm Beach County. Um, the fish are out from same area the Wahoos are, like 200 to 400 feet of water. They're most active in low light, so that dawn and dusk bite is really the best one, but you can catch them any time of day in places like Push Button Hill or around the Rankin Wreck off Stewart. Blackfin tuna tend to be a bit boat shy, so you want to put your spread out a, a little bit further than it is normally. Uh, just get those baits away from the boat. You can target them trolling with everything from small red and black or silver feathers to rig smaller ballyhoo or slow trolled thread fins or pilchards. A lot of boats in my area like to, to drift and deploy live baits or put them up on a kite so the, the fish aren't put down by the boat noise. Um, a drifting boat is a lot quieter. And you can also drift and live chum with good results. Average blackfin tuna in my region is going to be 10 to 30 pounds. 
and have a photo of a black fin from Butch Constable of Jupiter. He, he let his clients a uh, nice black fin in 300 feet of water, and that fish ate a live pilchard. Those are more reflective of the ones we got in the region. Not too bad. <clears throat> yeah, so going inside this, the inshore phase of the mullet runs going strong. A lot of snook blast and baits along the shorelines and around the bridges and docks at dawn, dusk, and after dark. We've got extreme high tides because of the full moon, and all that extra water pushes a bait off the flats, moves them tight to the shorelines. At the same time, it increases the depth of the water along the seawalls. So just about any seawall or point of land that sticks out right now is a prime ambush point for a snook. September is a month when we catch the largest snook of the year. So don't be afraid to throw, you know, bigger mullet or, or uh, big swimming plugs, soft plastics like an Artemis shad. Uh, in the middle of the day, uh, a mullet head works really good. Uh, average snook in my region is going to be like 5 to 20 pounds. And I have a, a snook photo that Captain James Cronk sent me. Um, that's a shot of one of a handful of fish they caught on a dock lot at night, just throwing a mullet pattern fly. The other thing we've got, we've seen a big resurgence in the seagrasses in the Indian and St. Lu Indian River uh, from the St. Lucie Power Plant all the way about to the Wabasso Causeway. And that's really improved the sea chow population in those areas. A lot of the fish are under two pounds, but it's you know just good to see the schooling fish back in action in places like Savannah Road Dock Line, the mid, up in Middle Cove, Bear Point, the Moorings Flat, um, around Torpy Road. We've seen some uh, cooler mornings lately, so the bite's going from sunrise to about 8.30 or 9. You want to target the fish with soft plastics like a, a saltwater sass and pilchard colored shad or four inch sea shad. Put a quarter ounce jig head on it or small top water plugs right now. Most of the baits are finger mullet, so you want to go with a smaller plug. You can always throw a live shrimp or finger mullet on a rattle cork like a, like a saltwater sass and quick cork. Average trout in my region is going to be one to two pounds and have a photo, uh, you know, representative of the size of the fish. Captain Jason Arman of That's Our Man Land-Based Fishing Charter sent me this shot of a nice sea trout they caught in St. Lucie County on a slamming shad-colored saltwater shad. Well, that's some great offshore and, and inshore stuff, Mike, but what about the bass? Let's see what's going on in the freshwater this week. Well, you know, the bass bite's been picking up on Lake Okeechobee, but if you're gonna do well, it's crucial right now that you get on them, you get out early for the morning shad bite. I was talking to Captain Nathan Shellen of OkeechobeeBassFishing.com. He said most of the anglers are on the water in the dark, heading to the southwest corner of the lake in that stretch from Indian Prairie Canal all the way down to Moonshine Bay. You can throw anything from shad-colored bass assassin split tail sh shads or vapor shads to a white spinner bait to a chatter bait or a lipless crank bait. And then once that shad bite uh, dies down, it's time to move up to the stretch between like uh, Harney Pond and Taylor Creek and start flipping the thicker reeds and cattails with creature baits like a Woompa Craw or a Skunk Ape or even a, a, like a eight inch June bug colored worm. The water levels are up a bit. So the fish have moved in from the outside edges to the secondary lines. Um, so it moved in, if we get wind, you're blocked a little bit. It's a 20 fish morning, average bass one to four pounds, fish up to seven pounds right now. Still, it's hot out, but the fishing's still hot. So that's a great bass report, Mike. We get out early, it. man. Get, get out early. Yeah. That's the key. Get out early and get back early. We're going to take it. your TH Marine hotspots for the east region from here. Captain Mike says get out there early and check out the snook and tarpon on the Stewart Causeways. And at night works really good, too. Topwater plugs, swim plugs, and Artemis shad, plus live mullet are the ways to go to get those fish to eat. And then offshore, dolphin, blackfin tuna, and wahoo in 190 to 340 feet of water off Sloan's Curve. Troll ballyhoo, pilchards, or mullet seem it, to be good. In other words, start early, take a nap, get out at night. Get out at sounds, night. Sounds good, right? It's perfect life. I'll take it. That's really nap. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's not my life. I like, the okay. I like the fish part, and then I really like the nap part. I stopped napping when my kids started napping. It happens. So you know that happens. happens. All right, coming up soon is more of the Shoreline Showdown Surf Fishing Tournament Series presented by Fish Bites. Four tournaments, one championship, and over $75,000 in guaranteed payouts. 
plus fishing for a chance to qualify to compete for the title of the Ultimate Surf Angler. We are two down with two more to go, so for more information on dates and locations, scan that QR code or visit shorelineshowdown.com. You'll be competing against our very own Dave Farrell because yeah. he'll be there too, and he wants to be that Ultimate Surf Angler. We know that. <laughs> Speaking of Dave, coming up is Dave, and he's at the ready for the Fish Bites Trading Post Rigs and Techniques at the CCA Workbench. You don't, you don't have to be scared about fishing with against me in this thing so far. But Nonsense. at least it's coming back to my part of the, the state. So go. maybe I'll do a lot better. Home turf. Yeah, fish. we're going to be talking a lot about this Wahoo stuff when we come back. So stay tuned. Stay tuned. And then we're letting our lines out in the Sea Sucker Panhandle region with the one and only Captain Patsy. We'll be right back. The Florida Insider Fishing Report is brought to you by Yamaha. Reliability starts here. Fenwick, feel everything. Sirius XM Marine, weather, fish mapping, entertainment. Penn, let the battle begin. Casa Vieja Lodge, five-star angling in beautiful Guatemala. Berkeley Prospect Chrome, Fish Bites Trading Post, the first choice of first coast anglers. Castaway Coffee, one taste and you'll be hooked. And Daiquiri Deck, Food, drinks, friends. Otherwise, we'll be fighting. And we're at the Fish Bites Trading Post Tackle Shop and the CCA Workbench Rigs and Techniques. So let's see what kind of rigs and techniques we need for Wahoo tonight. Well, you know, Wahoo, like everybody's been saying, they're one of the most sought after game fish, you know, offshore game fish in yeah. Florida. Uh, you know, they're tough to catch. They, they have their mouth is just full of razor sharp teeth, very hard, kind of like a beak with lined with razors, you know, so yeah, it's, yeah. it's not conducive to putting a hook in them, you know, and they travel at such speed and the way they attack is, is just so lightning fast that you miss a lot. I mean, you can't, to catch a, a lot of wahoo, you usually miss a lot of wahoo. And it's surprising how many you hook and lose. You lose a lot. Because of that mouth structure. Yes, it's just, it's yeah. just a rocky place where your seed can find no purchase. Yeah. You know, that's what we say. <laughs> and uh, they, they like to eat, uh, you know, really colorful, fast moving stuff. So a lot of guys have been using that high speed trolling type of deal for a while. And, um, you know, where we live, like Tommy was saying, up in the northern part of the state, central Florida above, you know, uh, starting now, uh, September, October, November, December, the winter months are the yeah. time where we catch most of them. Although I've caught a lot of wahoos in the middle of the summertime. You yeah. know, we have a, you know, we used to have a thing we'd call the three o'clock wahoo, where we'd get a lot of uh, wahoo bites on the way trolling in. Actually caught one this year doing that. Well, so, and you and I live in the central east region of the state, right. and we know that those bigger wahoo come into the reefs and feed on the small kingfish that we get in Correct. late July they, through early August. And you'll, and when you're fishing in a, in a kingfish, pile of kingfish, sometimes you'll catch a you'll wahoo in there wahoo. with them. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, that's a really good thing to do. Mm -hmm. um, they Some of the baits that we use when we're trolling um, are some of these these right here, these uh, Savage Max Matchstick Deep Divers. That's a nine and a half knot plug. It's a high, high speed trolling lure. They got those 6X hooks on there so they can really take a, a whopping, you know, and they're reinforced with a, a wire construction all the way through there. The six inch is like two ounces and the six and three quarter inch there is like two and four fifths ounce, which I don't know what that is. It's almost <laughs> it's almost three ounces. They have a really nice super glow finish on them. So it attracts a Wahoo because they're really shiny. They like, like I said, they like those really shiny, you know, shiny uh, lures that are moving quickly. A lot of mylars and stuff like that. They like that. And, and if you're lucky enough to be in a spot where you can, you know, you're marking a lot of fish on a, let's say a hump or a, a, a sea mount or something, and you know there's a bunch there, you're seeing them skying on baits, which happens quite often with a Wahoo. Yeah. You can throw something like that out there. The Twitch Reaper offshore, you know, has a lot of really erratic action. You're gonna put wire on all of these. Right. Number nine or number 10 wire. Uh, and so, I've even talked to guys who throw a twitch style bait like this around a floating object, like a, like a piece of tree or something, and they're looking for dolphin, and all of a sudden, boom, here comes the wahoo. Yes, yeah, and that's a good thing to do. Yeah. And when you hook a wahoo a lot of times, if you have enough guys on the boat, uh, you, you got one hooked up, go ahead and have one guy toss out something like that mm -hmm, and, and mm -hmm. scooting it across the surface. And a lot of times those wahoos aren't by themselves, and here comes another guy to come and, and see what it is. 
Now, usually what I'll use offshore is pretty much a, a Ballyhoo wire pin rig. Uh, again, on number 10 wire, number nine or 10 wire with a number nine O'Shaughnessy hook, you know, usually a one or two hooks in it. This is the only time that I would ever use a double hook rig. Yeah, double hook. Is with wires, I mean with Wahoo, is because, um, you know, we're gonna keep that bugger. And now, are you, <laughs> we don't are care. you a, a inline guy or are you a, a 180 out guy? Uh, I'm an inline guy. Okay. Yeah, I want I want everything to be pretty much the same. I want that one of those hooks to either hit him in the head or on the side of his face or something yeah. like that and pretty much snag him. Now, when you're talking about high speed stuff, you know, you're going to use some uh, trolling weights over here, and you know, uh, you can use a, just a regular big lure with a double hook. Uh, rig in it, mm -hmm. or you could use an octopus skirt with like four uh, big four ounce egg weights in it, and then a and a piece of wire with a with a with a double hook rig in it, and that thing is that's a great cheap Wahoo killer. Yeah, a big purple skirt with four egg egg weights stuffed up inside of it, and a real heavy you know this kind of wire, a braided wire rig in it yeah. with you know double hook rig. Well, and there's and trolling a really fast at 14 to 18 knots. And there's a reason for this type of wire on your on your weight because a lot of times the wahoo will actually attack he'll come the weight. And eat that yeah, he'll come and try to eat so your you weight when you're going along. So you have to protect it. Yeah. Now when you we are going to try to use some international. Uh, if, when you're using the high speed, you want to kind of use an 80 because you're going to put mm -hmm. a whole lot of a whole lot of line on there, and uh, just because of the weight and everything, that bigger reel stays on a bent butt rod in the in the rod holder the whole time. So it's really not moving much. It's pointing out towards the back of the boat. And if you're standing up, you know, going slower, doing the most of the stuff I do, the, 50, the International 50 SW is just as good. Has two speed reel. You can stand up. You're not fighting that big 80 and right. the fish. What about drag pressures when you're high speed trolling? Uh, they put up, they crank it up there pretty high. You know, I don't do a whole lot of that because um, I don't like, I don't, I don't like having to just reel all that stuff in. I'm not really fighting right. the fish. I right. feel like I'm commercial fishing. So I like I pretty much prefer to, to just use a, a 50 Stand wide. Stuff. And but they crank that drag up there pretty high, you know, depending depending on what kind of stuff they have out there as, as far as their well, main line and their wire leader. I wish we had more time, Dave, because there's so much to talk about. But yes. the Wahoo, we covered a lot of it. Bree, there where are we is. gonna go we next? We covered a ton. But you know what, there's definitely never a bad time to bring the best sushi the Sea Sucker Panhandle region has to offer aboard. Would you agree, Pat? I, I totally do agree, Bree. I tell you what, people often ask me, what's my favorite fish to eat? And the answer always includes wahoos. And we catch them year round in the Northern Gulf. Uh, spring through fall is probably considered the most common time to catch wahoo. And that's probably because folks are out there chasing other pelagics. But late winter fishing on the shallow rigs of the west can be phenomenal. So we do catch them all 12 months of the year. To target wahoos, go with a faster troll rate, like Dave was just mentioning, up to and over 50 knots. And baits and lures that get below the water surface. You know, you want to use planers, diving plugs, trimblers, or metal deadheads. You know, basically get your get your your presentation, you know, down down deep a little bit. Red, black, and orange are all popular wahoo lure colors. And the guys to the west off the river mouth. They swear by pink, and you know that, that's not something you hear about very often in Wahoos, but they sure do over there. Uh, this time of year, the bottom breaks where it, where it drops from 160 feet to 200 plus feet are gr great places to find Wahoo, and it's not uncommon for charters that keep a couple lures in the water and cruise at 12 to 18 knots to and between their bottom spots to catch bonus Wahoos. Additionally, weed lines, rips, and any floating debris, particularly stuff like a deadhead tree, you know, any type of floating debris that, that penetrates down deep into the water column can be loaded with wahoo. Uh, the northern gulf wahoos can push or exceed 100 pounds, but most common 30 to 50 pounds is, is, is more, more normal. Staying offshore, just like last week, the amberjacks are being targeted and caught in good numbers. Bigger fish are coming from the deeper water, 300 plus feet, with the large metal wrecks like the Ozark, the Oriskany, or the cutoff rigs being targeted but also high relief natural bottom like the AJ Rock on the timber holes and bigger ledges on the southwest edge have been productive. The jacks are often marked midwater well off the bottom. You want to use a frisky high energy live bait on long leaders. That long leaders let your lets that frisky bait have freedom to run. Friskier the better. The amber jacks they like to chase down their, their food. There are some jacks on the bigger public spots in shallow water 
and, and in that shallower water, they can be caught on topwater lures. You also want to use that lure, you know, skip it across the surface, make it move. Uh, these shallow jacks are mostly short fish, but the topwater bite makes up for their size. Uh, moving inshore, there's been some good Spanish mackerel being caught primarily from the western part of our region in the Perdido Bay area, but also over to the east in St. Andrews Bay in Panama City. Lure fishermen are catching them on jigs, spoons, bubble rigs, and smaller lip plugs. But a live shrimp under a cork fish on a long shank J-hook is particularly effective for the bigger Spanish. Live chumming with small menhaden or pilchers will also, also increase the bite. You want to fish the roll downs off the flats, the points, and the channel edges. Diving or dipping turns are good indicators of the same bait fish being present that Spanish are keyed on. Plenty of small Spanish around, but some bigger fish up to four pounds are being found as well. And then finally inshore, it's mid-September and the red fishing is really picking up. Uh, the, the red fish are in the inlets and around the bigger bridges of the big bull redfish. They're starting to stack up. Live baits on a Carolina rig on the falling tide is best. Croakers, spot minnows, finger mullets are all the preferred baits. On the flats, a pilchard, menhaden, or a similar bait suspended under a cork works really well. But you can also go with gold spoons, a uh, suspending twitch bait, or a soft plastic paddle tail on an eight ounce jig head. Again, you want to target the points, the tidal creek mouse, and the potholes. And the redfish, and it's just going to keep getting better into October. So this is a good transitional time of the year where, where things are starting to pick up. That's an awesome report for the Panhandle region, Pat. I'm going to take your hot spots for the Panhandle region from here. Captain Pat says Panama City's Hathaway Bridge is producing good numbers of bull redfish by freelining croakers, pinfish, and other small bait fish around it. You might even get a tarpon to bite over there. And then offshore, daytime sword fishing in the ditch east of the Petronius has been very productive. Use skirted strip baits and squid on 50 pound stand up tackle. I'm going to go with the electric reel instead of the stand up. <laughs> I really am. No, you can you can do it, Jim. Once. We're getting once. older. We're getting older. Yeah, I'm Let's getting go with smarter, that. too. I want to work oh, less, right. less hard. I'm smarter, call you a not name. harder. <gasps> Don't call me a name. All right, we hope you are as excited as we are to help celebrate the 10th year of competition of CCA Florida Star presented by Yamaha. Can you believe it? 10 years, that's as old as I am on the show. That's yeah. crazy. But 10 years of tagging and releasing redfish and mahi awarding boats to the winners. And this year's award ceremony will have Star awarding another nearly $500,000 in prizes, which includes another $100,000 in college scholarships to round out $1 million in scholarships. Amazing. Going? Come Amazing. help us celebrate. Going. You're going? Oh, that's good. Come help us celebrate October 12th at the 10th annual CCA Florida Star Awards ceremony presented by Discover Crystal River at the Grove of Sweet Citrus Acres. Dave is going, as he said. I'm, well, yep, go see Dave. He go always see has a Dave. good time. He's going to be there. All right. The Real Legend Central East Region captain is pretty ready to give his report live in the studio yeah. coming right up. And then the Discover Crystal River Northwest Region captain, Jeff Hageman, is spilling the Wahoo catching goods as well. So stay hooked and we'll be right back. The Florida Insider Fishing Report is brought to you by Power Pole, Total Boat Control, Berkeley, Your Fish, Our Science, Bahio, Blue Light Blocking, Radically Clear Polarized Fishing Sunglasses, Scoozy Shoes, The Captain's Choice for Premium Lightweight Comfort, Sea Sucker, Easy On, Easy Off, Incredibly Strong, Pen, Let the Battle Begin, Kubota, Together, we do more. And the International Order of T. Roosevelt, protect your right to fish. Well, Jim, our species this week is really seeming to be at the top of the list so far when it comes to table fare, and it looks to be the same yep. story in the Real Legends Central East region. It's mm -hmm. your time to shine, bud. I'll, I'll tell you, you know, it's my wife's favorite meal at the sushi restaurant. Yep or on the grill. She just loves them. And we talked last week about the wahoo that we were catching in 70 to 90 feet of water that were feeding on those little, you know, those little kingfish and those big blue runners that were in there at the time. And so we've had some, you know, we've had some big swells. It's going to be difficult to tell what's going to happen with the wahoo, but normally whenever we get the swells, all of those fish that were inshore are going to push back out to the first bit of clean water. So that's where you guys want to get out to. Check it out, you know, try the 27 fathom ridge, the cones or steeples, depending on what you call it throughout my part of the region. Um, but anything, once you get to that 
clean water edge. Get your 50s out, get your 80s out, you know, get the, get the high speed lures out like we just talked about at the workbench. And first thing in the morning, that's what you wanna do. Later in the day, I, I do find that a lot of guys are starting to actually get bait tubes on their boats now and use some of those smaller bonitas and blue runners and things of that nature that are hard, hardy, fast moving baits and put out a bunch of vibration. That mm -hmm. seems to be the key to wahoo fishing. And then if you don't have that type of a scenario, instead of pulling everything up top, put things way down deep on the downrigger. I mean, way down there, you know, 150, 100, 150 feet down, and you seem to pick up more wahoo through the middle part of the day when they don't come up to the surface as much. So it's a, you know, our average wahoo's oh, 30 to 50 pounds, and so get a 60 to 80 pounder once in a while. But there's some pretty good wahoo in our region throughout the next couple of weeks and even actually into early December. So get out there and, and uh, catch yourself some wahoo. Now the other species offshore right now is flounder. And you typically think of this as an inshore species, but with the mullet run going on, a lot of the fish that are out in those deeper wrecks and reefs, they've been coming into the beaches a little bit, but there's still plenty on our wrecks that are out in 50, 60, 70 feet of water. And I like to use a live finger mullet for them. They're, they're ready to eat them whenever you drop them down there. I put them on uh, as heavy a jig as I can get to the bottom with. So if there's a lot of current, a little bit heavier, maybe a two ounce or two and a half ounce jig. Uh, if it's a light current, then sometimes you can get down in 40 or 50 feet with only a half ounce or an ounce of lead and get that finger mullet down there. Anyway, fish the up current side of the structure first, fish the down current side of the structure next, and they're, they're gonna have a preference as to where they wanna be on the structure. So you wanna make sure that like if you have a rodan on the front of your boat, you can spot lock, move around and get up either up current or down current of that particular mm -hmm. structure. Most of our flounder are running about 18 to 22 inches. And I've got a little flounder here, a picture of one that's in the net. Uh, that one came on a little uh, a saltwater assassin, half ounce jig head uh, with a finger mullet on it. Uh, we caught that in about 50 feet of water uh, this past, just before the swell started. Perfect. Now, swinging back inshore, we've got mangrove snapper, and every species of near-coastal fish right now is basically feeding at the inlets. Um, but mangrove snapper are one of the tastier ones that you can target and bring home with you. So I was talking with Captain Mike Kipp of, of Fireline Fishing Charters, and he says that the rock jetties, ledges, and docks around the uh, Ponce Inlet area are doing really good. He's getting good numbers of all three of those species. Now, the lanes typically are a little short. The muttons, though, he's getting legal muttons inside of Ponce Inlet right now on finger mullet, so that's a good place to key in. Take your pin battle 4,000 reel, load it up with some 20-pound braided line, and just use a 20 to 20, third, sometimes a 30-pound leader if the water's dirty on the outgoing tide. And uh, same rig, little knocker rig or a little jig head that we were using for the flounder, and most of those mangrove snapper are running 10 to 15 inches. And I've got two pictures here. I've got one that we caught in the Banana River the other day. So this is a flats mangrove. And then I've got a second one that Captain Mike sent with that nice little 18 and a half inch mutton that he actually caught in the river there at Ponce Inlet. My last species brie is snook, and the snook bite has been on fire. It's continued to stay on fire. If you guys and gals get out to the inlets at night especially, it is really, really good fishing right now. Um, but on the incoming tides at Sebastian, the live bait gig is the way to go. Just keep your artificials at home, bring some live finger mullet, or even a live full-size mullet or a croaker, get out there because the fish are a little fussy in the daytime. But at night, you know, an Artemis shad is really, really good in my region. And especially if you get an incoming tide a pilchard or a uh, green hornet color is two top colors right now on that incoming nighttime tide. Most of our snook are going 28 to 32 inches. And I've got a nice picture of one that we had at the jetty the other Ooh. day. And that's Mark uh, with a, a nice fatty that we put in the boat. A nice fatty is an yeah. understatement. That's a, that's a great fish. There's some good snook right now. Yeah. They're, I mean, and they're biting really well. Oh, it's great. time to go. Get if out. you haven't gone, you gotta go. Go catch Just a memory go. with Jim. <laughs> All right, Jim. Well, yeah. Call me. <laughs> <laughs> Let's take a look at the Rodan Marine System's hot spots for the Central East region. Go for it. Well, in my opinion, this is your best bet right now. <laughs> Mullet run mixed with, uh, you know, it's a mixed bag with that mullet run. You got snook, shark, tarpon, various snapper species, and they're all feeding very aggressively on the finger mullet around all three inlets. Offshore, troll skirted ballyhoo for sailfish, dolphin, and wahoo near rips and flotsam. And you're probably going to find that clean water edge right at the western edge of the Gulf Stream, so that's where I would say look for that clean blue water, and that's where you're going to find your best fishing right now. Sounds good. All right, the Discover Crystal River Northwest region is hitting all the who marks thus far in the year. So let's get a play-by-play -play with Captain Jeff Hageman. Hello, Jeff. How you doing? Wahoo! Woo. Uh, getting better and better every year. We've had one of our best years this year. High-speed trolling is working well. Uh, trolling anywhere between 10 and 18 miles an hour, depending on your current. 
and, and wind. Zigzag constantly when you're out there. Pull your waters in and out of that whitewash. Get them a clean presence, a dirty presence in that whitewash behind your boat. Uh, pull as many rods as you feel comfortable. Usually when we're fishing them, it's usually two or three rods. Check your shotgun rod, your long rod, out about 200, 300 yards behind the boat with a weighted uh, stainless steel cable. The other two rods are short, 80 yards, 32 ounce torpedo lead in front of it. Use the weighted one because they will eat the weight. Um, long mono shock leader in between your weight and your lure. The other rod should be your mid rod, and then that'll be about 100 to 150 yards down the boat with a 28 ounce torpedo lead and another shock leader. Uh, Weighted lures, both of the outside rods. We usually run a double hook rig on those. And if you want to fish in anywhere from 120 feet to 700 feet of water, look for that clean water over wrecks and hard bottom. Also bait, any kind of bait out there. And frigate birds are also a great indicator that are the large fish in the area. And I've got a photo here of a nice West Coast Wahoo. Heck yeah, that's a good one. And then staying offshore, Captain Rob Davenport of, out of St. Pete also reporting a good cobia bite right now. The cobia has kind of moved out on the offshore reefs and wrecks and hard bottom. Live pinfish, where a bucktail has been his go-to. He's also catching them while he's bottom fishing on a knocker rig. So you get cobia come up, you might have a friend, you can pitch a pinfish to him. I've got a couple photos here of Aiden Gilbert and his buddy Keaton with a oh. nice couple of wild, or, excuse me, cobia. Wow. Gotta love it. Gotta love it. Yeah. I'm telling you. Love yeah. those. Captain Jim Pollard of Big Daddy Sport Fishing is reporting good redfish by Cap Bay right now. Jim's finding most of his redfish along the mangrove shoreline. He's been moving really slowly with his trolling motor. So get your rodan out real slow, as slow as it'll go, and just kind of creep along. The water's dirty still from that all that rain we've been having and that tropical storm we had go by. It's still pumping out a bunch of water into the bay and it's still pretty dirty out there. So move slow, take some time. Um, live bait's been working good. Ladyfish, mullet, cut has been working real well too. 25 to 35, uh, 25 to 30 pound fluorocarbon leader, a three-aught circle hook has been his go-to setup for live bait and cut bait. And I've got a photo here of a nice Tampa Bay redfish. Lots go. of spots, love it. But tell us about the snook. The snook bite's been really good over here too. Corey Palmer out of Tarpon Springs has been reporting good snook bite in his area along the outer islands and beaches. That small fry bait is covering up the beaches right now. So getting that swash channel, you see all those snook in there busting them, pitch a live sardine in there on 20 to 25 pound fluorocarbon leader on the three aught trocar circle hook. And you can catch them right on the beach. Look for them popping first thing in the morning, late afternoon, and when that time is really good. You know, Jeff, you were talking about that cut ladyfish and cut mullet in that dirty water. We in the east side of the state had a lot of that happen the last five, six, seven years. We had a lot of algae and that sort of thing. The yeah. fish could not see a lure and dead bait. That's the, when he says, put that ladyfish out there, put that piece of cut mullet out there, let the fish smell their way to your bait. That's such a great tip that you gave the guys tonight, Jeff. I'm gonna take your Ozello Keys Marina hotspots for the Northwest region from here. Captain Jeff says, inshore the snook on the beginning and end of the outgoing tides, use pinfish and grunts with a one ounce lead drifted in the passes. And then offshore, mangrove snapper on the high relief structure in 15 to 35 feet of water, and a small pinfish or sardine on a knocker rig is the way to catch those fish. That was a good tip. You gotta that sink was... the stink. <laughs> there you go, that works. <laughs> So many, so many ways you could use that. <laughs> Anyways, well, we're getting ready to empty our wallets for Taco Marine new products coming right up at the CCA Workbench. Dave, take the stink. Take it away. Oh, look at what? you. <laughs> See? Oh, you look so good in those. It's Hollywood. There it is. Can't call holiday Hollywood anymore. Nope. So you can be Bill Dances and stunt, stunt double. Dave Hollywood. <laughs> and then the Star Tron Central East region is getting us ready for some stripes and bites with Captain Jeff Page. We'll be right back. The Florida Insider Fishing Report is brought to you by Alta Equipment Company, where uptime matters. Ameritrail, load, launch, relax. Abyss Battery, power your pursuit. Rodan, set it, forget it, catch more fish. Discover Crystal River, Florida. 
Bass Assassin, and Saltwater Assassin. Best lures, period. Black Oak LED, never be left in the dark. And Maverick Boat Group, makers of premium boat brands Maverick, Hughes, Pathfinder, and Cobia. <laughs> well, we're at the Taco Marine Rigs in our new product segment at the yep. CCA Workbench. And Dave, you've got That's some correct. really unique little type things that we're going to talk about. Yeah. But, you know, some of them are been around for a while. Yeah, well, you know, this is a sea witch made by Island Lure. It's called the Island Witch. And I've, I've used sea witches forever. Some ever. of the first things that I ever pulled, you know, offshore for dolphins and wahoos and king mackerel and, you know, just about any offshore predator, you put that in front of a ballyhoo. And, you know, the sea witch, it just adds a lot of uh, motion and pulse to, a, to a, a ballyhoo bait when you're pulling it along and everything loves to come up and smash it. Yeah. Well, these new Island Witches, you know, they add that extra special mylar as well these are the half ounce versions of these of a sea witch and uh you know they're just made with really good materials they're tied really nice they have those realistic eyes they're just a, a it's like a, a sea witch you know pumped up to the next level and like i said marlin dolphin sailfish wahoo tuna king mackerel everything uh predatory fish you put a ballyhoo behind that thing uh, it's gonna kill it. You know, you could actually, believe it or not, put just a regular single hook back there with on wire and without a ballyhoo, and they'll and they'll still get smacked. And here's the other thing that I think about when I first started fishing many mm -hmm. many years ago. Somebody you, 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 we used sea witches. Uh -huh. Okay, we used sea witch style baits, right. but we would use a mullet strip or yes. some kind of a strip bait with them, and they're yes. so effective. Because or even a split or even a split tail. Split mullet. tail mullet because when they're tied in reverse. When the, the the hair is so lifelike in the right. water and pulses, and yeah. so you can put a dead bait behind it, even just a strip, and get away with it with this right. kind of a lure. It's very yeah. easy lure. They're six and, very and a half effective. inches. They come in those. Those are some new colors there: the green and yellow, the purple crystal, uh, the pink and blue. Um, so just you know, really, you know, very colorful. At, you know, attractive baits in, mm -hmm. in front. So you go to shopmirrorlures.com to get your island witches. So those are pretty cool. Next, we have the Bahio 12 South. You know, these are named after the iconic highway on the way to North Carolina Outer Banks, you know, the, mm -hmm. the Highway t South. They're a large fit, surf-inspired style. You know, they got that bold square profile. It looks like something that Burt Reynolds would have wore back in the day or Elvis, you know, it's, they're pretty nice. I like them. I, th that frame style is reminiscent of Bill Dance. That's, yeah, that's yeah. what that reminds me exactly. of. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Polarized, color enhancing, high def yeah. lenses, you know, with the patent pending uh, blue light blocking technology in there. Um, you can search for fish and see them and you don't have to worry about, you know, your eyes getting tired from all that blue light, which which saps the energy out of your eyes. And larger lenses just help you see more things in the water. Yeah. A lot of guys you'll see they're well, little narrow ones and yeah. they're missing it because the yeah. frame is blocking part of their view. Yeah, there you go. And those have the rubber nose pads, uh, little rubber temples on the back so that they stay in place even when you're sweaty. Mm -hmm. They got pin hinges in there, really nice hinges. And uh, like I said, they block 90 for 95 percent of the blue light and a hundred percent of the uv light to protect your eyes you know so and where do we find them bahio sunglasses.com cool next we have these shrimp walkers you know these are a pretty cool little gadget um if you're ever going to use a live shrimp you know one thing that you always do you stick a hook in a shrimp and uh, a lot of times you kill that shrimp and your live shrimp is now a dead shrimp yeah you know uh, but this way, you don't even have to pierce the shrimp at all. You just shri you just uh, slip this little ring over the over the hook over the horn of the shrimp. You know this will be upside down. There you go. Like that. And you and the horn will come through this way. And it's it's got it, so some, you can slide it up and down the shank of the hook, but it also stretches right. to get it over that horn. Right. And then you pull that red part back, and you uh, slip it around the carapace you know, that hard section right behind the head. And what that it's, does... It's almost like a little cup. Exactly. And what that does is it sticks that hook to the shrimp without having to pierce the shrimp. So the shrimp just acts like a shrimp now. He's got this thing on his back, but at least he's not hurt, you know. So he's bridled rather than running a hook through Correct. his body. 
Correct. And you can use yeah. that on a crawfish as well. These mm -hmm. are these are made for fishing those crustaceans. Yeah, crayfish walkers. Yeah. Tough, long lasting, you know, adjustable. They used to have a little spring in them. They don't have that anymore because you don't have any rusting problems. Yeah. These will last for a long time. So, you know, these are really cool. The shrimp walker from Palm Beach Tackle. Yeah. So Very cool. there you go. Um, last and not least, we, we have some, some Berkeley Pro Spec Chrome Braid. Uh, this was just this, these were just launched on September 9th of this year, just a few weeks ago. Uh, they were all tested by Berkeley's captains and guides, and these are optimized for trolling and deep dropping on electric reels. Okay. Uh, premium, smooth, supple, eight carrier braid, just uh, really high quality braid. Uh, they come in seven weights: uh, 20, 30, 50, 65, 80, 100, and 130 pound. Five different colors: multicolored. Uh, bl uh, blaze orange, feels high vis slick. yellow, and orange blue and yeah. white. Is, is yeah, it feels colors. very slick. So it where, is do, very and where slick. do we find those? Uh, BerkeleyFishing.com. <clears throat> Great job, Dave. Go, you know, go out there and check out some of these new products, especially this little shrimp walker. That's pretty cool. It is well, Bree, where saddle. are we going next? It's a saddle. saddle. It is. Is that what it is? Yeah, yeah. A, shrimp a shrimp saddle. saddle. There you go. There you go. I like it over. That was like new products meets uh, rigs and techniques. It was kind of nice. I liked it. <laughs> Learned some stuff. All right. Well, if there's any time to try and target Wahoo in the Star Tron Central West region, it's coming up. So let's get a head start on what we'll need to know with Captain Jeff Page. What's up, Page? <laughs> Good evening, everybody. Good to hear you on there, Jimmy Ross. And you know, in the Startron Central West region, we don't have an abundance of wahoo, and our window is pretty small. It's not a year-round species. But that being said, as we get into November, and then right on through February, even into March, if it stays cool, the cooler months, those fish usually show up, and I don't know if they push in from the Gulf Stream or exactly what their pattern is, but it's usually out in deeper water, 150, 200 feet on out. And you're gonna wanna look for, of course, bird, birds hovering, any type of bait holding on structure and color changes in the water. Captain Chris Seeger always stresses that that color change is important. Now, yes, you can go out and high speed troll for these fish. Captain Chris suggests early morning or late evening for that. But then while you're bottom fishing, and I'm sure someone has touched on this, it's not uncommon to be reeling up a grouper or a snapper and have a wahoo come up just like a cobia does. So that's why a flat line is always important when you're out in that Gulf of Mexico bottom fishing. Now my wahoo picture tonight, I have a really nice one provided from Captain Tim No of Gulf Coast Offshore Ventures. And that's a full grown one right there. Sure it is, Jeff. It That's certainly amazing. is. Well, tell us about the permit. Permit, Jimmy, you know, with these calmer mornings, which we've been having for well over a month, it's just been really nice in the morning. East winds, the Gulf's been pretty calm, and uh, five to ten miles an hour or less. And guys getting out early are finding these fish up over the three to seven mile uh, artificial reefs and any other structure that you might have marks on. But the cool thing is a lot of these permits are holding on artificial reefs, which are no numbers. You can get them at your court tag house, uh, your courthouse tag station. And uh, a lot of these fish that are holding on them are up in that 15, 20 pound class range. The hardest thing, Jim, has been finding the crabs, finding the bait stand that's selling them or going out on that afternoon outgoing tide and dipping them yourself. Now, Billy Alstrom, once he's been finding them, a lot of times he'll run out of the crabs and he's been throwing that U-Pro Pompano jig in the pink and white 3 8 pattern and he's been doing real well on them. And, you know, the permit is just an overgrown Pompano. My photo tonight is of a lady angler with a really nice permit she caught with Jason Stock of Full Send out of Anna Maria. Now, my inshore report, redfish, I've been getting good reports of schools of redfish showing up way up in upper Tampa Bay, all the way down to Charlotte Harbor, and all points in between. And I say that because it wasn't long ago, if you mentioned redfish in Little Sarasota Bay, down around Blackburn Point Bridge, a little bit south of Venice, and a little bit north up towards Stickney Point, there wasn't any redfish down there. 
and now there seems to be quite a few. I'm getting reports from weekend fishermen as well as fishing captains. Seems like on the higher tides, they've been doing better around docks and oyster bars on the east side of the bay, north of Blackburn Point Bridge. Artificials, it's tough to not want to throw a quarter or a half ounce gold or silver spoon. Soft plastic like a gulp shrimp on an eighth or a quarter ounce jig head will get the job done. And then, of course, live bait. I've been having really good luck with pinfish under a cork, number one, because the pinfish stays lively or longer. And number two, with that cork on there, you can really get it out there a long way. My redfish photo tonight is a brand new college freshman baseball player, Dylan McDonald, with a nice redfish he got in Sarasota Bay this past weekend. And a Florida And my last species, speckled trout. You know I love that trout. Still out in that deeper grass flats. The real cool thing, Rick, I mean, Jimmy, while you're out grass flat fishing, it's not uncommon that a school of jacks, bluefish, and redfish will fire up right next to where you're catching trout. And if you're ready, again, a flat line or another lure or even throw your trout lure in there. Um, you're going to catch jacks, bluefish, redfish. We even got on a good sailfish bite. I know that doesn't sound too good, but they were coming up and hitting topwater plugs like they were like they were a game fish. And I'm talking big six to eight pound sail cats. So it, it's really a good game out there on that deep grass. And all you want to find is the bait schools, soft plastics like a 16th ounce jig head with a gulp shrimp on it under the popping cork or a Jay Walker 120 in the chrome pattern. And my last photo tonight is of an 11-year-old Jackson Turaz with a nice trout he got. That's an awesome report. And like you say, multiple species out there in the bay. So stay tuned. Cap Page is bringing another big one next week, so don't go away. Then we're going to take the Daiquiri Deck hot spots for the Central, East, Central West region from here. Thanks, buddy. Inshore schools of reds holding around the oysters and sandbars in Turtle and Bull Bay on the higher stages of the tide. Live corked pinfish or a half ounce Johnson silver spoon are working best than offshore. Groups of permit holding on the artificial reefs at the three to seven mile range off of Anna Maria Island and you can free line some pass crabs. That's going to be the best way to get those fish to bite. All right, I know we showcase this every week, but when you're on the road, make yeah. sure you show your support for Florida's fisheries with a Conserve Florida's Fisheries license plate. Funds from the sale of the redfish tag directly support protecting and enhancing marine resources, habitat restoration, water quality, and coastal environmental education. Make sure you get yours now, like I did at your local DMV or redfishtag.com. You're up next. And I've got, I'm renewing next month because it's my birthday. So I'm doing my boats and Perfect. my new truck. Jim so will have it too. I'm looking forward to it. All right, the Alto Equipment Southwest region is full of surprises with Captain Ronnie Houston when we come back. And remember to keep up with everything fishing in Florida. Make sure to head over to our website, like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter and Instagram. And of course, for adventures along with reports, our YouTube channel, Captain Rick Murphy is always there. We'll be back. The Florida Insider Fishing Report is brought to you by StarTron. Start, run, and store with StarTron. Berkeley, your fish, our science. CCA Florida, the voice of recreational anglers for over 35 years. Front Runner Boats, performance built offshore fishing boats made in the USA. Takeuchi, from world first to world leader. The Florida Keys and Key West, come as you are. Murphy's Law Sport Fishing. Book your trip today at murphyslawsportfishing.com and Strike Zone Fishing. Welcome back. Hey, you might get lucky and catch one of those elusive Alta Equipment Southwest Region Wahoos, but if not, Captain Ronnie Houston has your back with plenty of other options. Hi, Ronnie. Hey, how you doing, guys? You know, uh, Wahoo is really not something that is targeted in the Southwest region, but you know, more and more every year, we're hearing about more steady catches on an annual basis. So generally, when guys are running out to depths past 80 feet, they're keeping eyes open for birds, you know, baits on top, weed lines, and once they get in some of those areas, they're basically, you know, possibly trolling feathers, getting to some of those areas and maybe trolling some big plugs. We're actually drifting through there with some large live baits, but I can tell you what, a lot of guys tell me when they get out in some of those depths and they're fishing the bottom, a simple flat line out with a large live bait will catch you a, a wahoo. Uh, and a prime example of that is a monster wahoo that was caught 
Well, practicing that pattern by hog wall charters so they can be caught. Very, very oh, nice yeah, fish yes for that. Yes, they can. Yeah. <laughs> Got to run away, but look at what you get when you get there. Still on the offshore side, you know, the mangrove and yellowtail snapper. That bite's been really consistent uh, through the summer right now. You know, wrecks and ledges, 90 to 100 feet. Guys are saying if the water's cloudy, uh, you might want to drop down to 15 to 20 pound fluorocarbon. If it's a little, you know, worked up, you can get away with 30. Chumming's going to be the key, but once you get the fish into a certain depth of water column when you're chumming, you can possibly flatline. If they're down in the mid column, you might use a little bit of weight. And uh, if they're all the way down the bottom, you know, chicken rigs seem to be working well. And you can also use bright color troll lights, throwing them in from the top and let them drift towards the bottom using live filters and small cut bait. A prime example of that is the Naples Take a Soldier fishing event this past weekend. If you look at those snappers in that bucket, the winning offshore team had 10 snappers weighing 58 pounds. So those are some pretty good snappers. So opportunities for big mangroves are out there right now. And they are. Well, let's go inshore, Ronnie. Shore side of the snook, you know, with the opening of snook season here in the next few weeks and the full moon we're having right now, intercoastal docks and seawalls throughout the whole region are holding good fish. You can also fish bridge spans in the Cape Coral area, Sanibel area, Charlotte Harbor, and Fort Myers Beach area. Fish are also holding in the beaches and passes along the coast, as long as also as the outer Gulf Islands right now from Goodland down to the Everglades. Uh, with the tides we're having right now, I just filmed this guy home from filming the Sports and Adventures. We're getting some really big flood tides, so your mid tides before and after the high is really when you're going to get your bites. Live pinfish, pilchards, uh, live shrimp, four to six inch swim baits, and top water walk. The dog lures have been working best. And I got a nice picture of a uh, couple military guys I had out over the weekend for the Naples Take Soldier fishing. There's a nice oversized snook that was caught working some of that pattern. Uh, the last species is going to be the redfish. Now, right now in the southern end of the region, Kingston Key right now, the bird key is really picked up a lot on the on the redfish. Your outer gold shorelines, here we go again, mid incoming and the last of the outgoing due to the flood tide. It gets tough. The easiest way to catch them is probably scent. So you want to be using shrimp or cut baits on knocker rigs. On your mid tides, your gold spoons, as well as live pilchards and finger muller, which there's plenty of those moving in. On your really lower tides, your top water walker dog lures or your old fashioned bright colored pucktail tip with shrimp because of the scent. There's a nice fish that was just recently caught down in the, in the uh, Florida Air Everglades while fishing with Captain Derek Dappen. Guys, if you're going to get out on the inshore side, look at these tides, beat these flood tides, and you'll get out and you'll catch you some good fish. Hey, Ronnie, real quick, you know, everybody's having flood tides this time of the year. You guys, uh, what is the main thing that you like to use whenever you get that super, super high water? If your bite gets tough on you and the fish gets scattered, what, what do you go for a search bait? Well, you know, as a search bait, uh, like we did uh, filming here today, you, know, you want to use something with some sight, and some sound, especially if the water's a little dirty. We used a lot of rattling uh, baits. We used the Berkeley War Pigs. Sound and reaction bite is going to catch a fish. So when that flood tide gets up, these fish aren't really reacting until the tide starts going out. So a rea good reaction bait will work good or a good top water uh, walk the dog lure to get a reaction bite to catch some of them fish. Sight and sound, that's what they need. They got to be able to see it and they got to be able to hear it and they got to be able to smell it. So all three. Hey, thanks a lot, Ronnie. That was a fantastic answer to that question and a great report. I'm going to take your battery tender hotspots for the southwest region from here. Captain Ronnie says get out there. There's trout along the west wall and bull and turtle bays. Check areas of grass combined with potholes and troughs using noise making corks and soft plastics like we were just discussing on that high water. Mm -hmm. And then offshore, permit on the wrecks and artificial reefs from Marco to Fort Myers Beach using live crabs. That was a good question. Well, right. Ron, and Ronnie's spot on. He's always, spot on always. always. Well, somebody else is spot on. In the Takeuchi Keys region, we're getting everything from Wahoo Rabar tips to trolling tips with Captain Ridge Murphy. Thank you for keeping the Murphy name alive tonight, Ridge. Go for it. <laughs> you know, Wahoo's on my top five favorite fish, not just because they're fast and hard to catch on mono, but also because of how good they are to eat. Sushi style with jalapeno, bell pepper, cilantro, olive oil, and lemon dumped in a soy sauce is the ticket, and you guys can thank me later. But here in the Alta Equipment region, we can catch Wahoo for the majority of the year from targeting them in the fall, all around the cold front, high speed trolling with R&R, &R, Wahoo, uh, Wahoo magnets, or a variety of Islander lures. Guys will high speed troll, leading them um, high speed troll with trolling leads ranging from 32 to 64 ounces, 
and three to five lures and a, and a zigzag spread down the edge from 100 to 600 feet of water. In the springtime, you can target them on the kites with wire and the longs in the middles with big gogs and speedos, or you can slow troll the big gogs and the speedos. This also is the time of year that the spear fishermen will dive on the wrecks looking for them and they'll, they'll use big spear guns and shoot them. During the summertime, you can find wahoos anywhere from the deeper edges from 200 to 400, trolling number four to number six planers, or, uh, or you can use while fishing the weed lines or the floaters. Vertical jigs on the floaters or trolling the structure with a spoon or ballyhoo on a wire or a sea witch on a planer. And I have a photo of a nice wahoo that was caught last week on the real McCoy out of Bud and Mary's, and this fish ate a sea witch when they were trolling in 350 feet of water. Nice one. So the early morning tuna bite on the humps has been the most consistent thing we have right now. The sharks are pretty bad, but you can get the tunas early. Take your time getting live bait because you're gonna use it. And you're gonna bump into the current, and you're gonna throw chummers and free line tilters behind the boat with two to three rods at a time to increase your odds. Keep the chum trickling out of the boat and the tunas will come up into the surface and give you a nice show. Uh, small eagle call live bait jay hooks on 30 to 40 pound fluorocarbon leader on a pen spinning reel will get the job done. If there's, if the event that the bait is hard, you can troll the humps around the tuna birds and around the humps with small islander lures of your choice. This past week, we pulled blue and white cone head shaped islanders and a pink and white bullet head shaped islander um, way back behind the boat and it worked pretty well. I have another photo of Ken, Steven, Mike, and Mike with their limit of black fin tunas that we got on our last trip trolling around the hump on the Murphy's Law. Well, that Freeman's putting them in the boat, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, front runner, man. Front, front runner, front runner. runner. You can't That's mistake awesome. that yeah. thing. Woo, it's so pretty. Nice, nice. Yeah. Well, let's go inshore, buddy. The baby poons are everywhere in the backcountry of Isla Mirada and the Lower Keys and Key Largo all up and down the Keys. Little tarpons are stringing up in the moats and around the island and the main shorelines of the coast. You want to throw bass assassin soft plastics like four inch sea shads and pilchard new gold and golden brim rigged weedless. And you're going to use a Finwick Pro Elite medium, medium fast rod with eight to 10 pound braided line on your pen authority or slammer. You're going to use a 30 to 40 pound fluorocarbon leader and make sure to keep the presentation going away from the fish rather than coming at them. They're going to get a lot more bites doing that that way. Also inshore, we got bonefish. The bone fishing in the backcountry of Alamorada and down in the lower keys has been pretty good. Work the incoming tides as the fish are working their way onto the flats. And you're gonna look for mudders, wakers, and tailors, and you're gonna pull with the current, looking for the fish. You're gonna stop the boat short and throw a shrimp rig weed lift on an eagle claw sh shrimp hook with two little split shots to help you throw it on your seven foot six medium light fast spinning rod. And you're gonna throw these the shrimp way big out big leaves out in front of them at least 15 feet or so and you're going to wait for the fish to approach it and then as soon as he sees the bait he's going to tip up his tail he's going to eat it and you're going to reel as fast as you can for 15 seconds and then lift the rod and let him scream off drag and you're going to have a good time doing it too uh, that's a fantastic tip on the bonefish ridge mm -hmm. appreciate that uh, we're going to take your hot spots for the keys region from here captain ridge says juvenile tarpon on the edges of the islands and on the coastlines of the back country in the Upper Keys, you want to throw bass assassin paddle tails on a weedless eagle claw hook. And then offshore, good early morning tuna bite on the humps, live chum with those pilchers, and the captains of the, he's going to bump it in and out of gear to keep you just ahead of the schools of fish, and you can free line baits on an eagle claw live bait hook back to them. You know, it is quite a finesse and patience to uh, actually land one of the bonefish. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. I had to learn that the hard way. And like With you ridge, said, actually. real because they're going to yeah. bite it and run, run towards at you, you mm -hmm. every time. Every time. You think he's not there. All right, well, now it's time to take a look at the tournaments going on in the Florida Keys. First up, we have the Key Largo Rotaries Take Stock in Children Backcountry Challenge, which allows fishing day and night from Friday, October 4th through the 6th, followed by the presentation of awards for releases of redfish, snook, and trout in adult and junior divisions. Then anglers compete for awards in three divisions, artificial fly and baits, for the longest bonefish and permit during the 54th annual Isla Mirada Fall All Tackle Bonefish and Permit Championship October 14th 
through the 16th. Next participants in the Marathon Offshore Swordfish Tournament choose two out of three fishing days, October 18th, 19th, and 20th, to reel in the largest swordfish by weight, with cash prizes for first and second place. And finally is the All-American Backcountry Fishing Tournament in Isla Mirada, November 7th through the 9th, where anglers target snook, redfish, bonefish, tarpon, and permit, with proceeds benefiting the Bonefish Tarpon Trust. For more information on Keys tournaments, go to flakeys.com. But coming right up, we're getting our diving lures and big yeah. baits ready for the Casa Vieja Southeast region with Captain Jimbo Thomas. So keep that fast troll going, and we'll be right back. The Florida Insider Fishing Report is brought to you by Yamaha. Reliability starts here. Fenwick, feel everything. Island Lures, Tournament Tackle. The IGFA, every fish, every water, every angler since 1939. Sportsman's Adventures with Captain Rick Murphy. 30 years of fishing for adventure. Berkeley Prospect Chrome. Real Legends, available at bellsflorida.com. And Taco Marine, master the catch. Today's Power Pole tip is certainly about the premium brand products that Power Pole has to offer. Now, over the last 25 years, they have certainly created some really cool products. The charge comes to mind for me, and certainly it saves me a lot of time each day when I can just simply get home, plug in, and not have to worry about watching and maintaining my batteries between trips. The other thing that I think about is how easy it's made my job and my boating experience on a day-to-day -day basis when I'm actually using the shallow water anchors that they have to offer as well. Remember this, when you're talking about buying a PowerPole product, you're supporting a Florida-based company right here in Tampa. And the thing that I also appreciate about them is how well their customer service and what they have to offer us. It certainly is the best in the industry, so keep that in mind. So on behalf of PowerPool, we want to thank you for supporting PowerPool over the last 25 years, and we also are looking forward to working with you with new products over the next 25 years. And if you have any questions, you can go to PowerPool.com, and that's today's PowerPool Tip of the Week. Yes, PowerPole, thank you. You've changed boating for the better. They have. They really have. All right, we're getting ready for the full moon craziness that's about to go down in the Casa Vieja Southeast region. So, Captain Jimbo, what do we need to know? It's going to get crazy, I tell you. Hello, Bree, Jim, and Dave. You know, Wahoo, they can be found year-round, and one of the best times of the year to target Wahoos is around the full moons of August, September, and October which is like right now, basically. And there's a couple of ways to go about catching these wahoos. And one of the most productive tactics is the fast troll weighted lures. You want to go fast 10 to 15 knots, or you can slow down to six to eight knots and fish with a three and a half or number four drone spoon or a sweet a sea witch with a bonita strip behind it. And you want to get that bait down deep and you can do it by using a wire line outfit or behind a number two, three or number four planer. Now, back in the old days, we would load up a big pin senator with wireline, but these days, most everyone uses a big pin international with mono or braid to pull those planers. Now, Wahoo also left the live baits. You can fish them under the kite or on the drift, and most of the bites are going to be on big baits. So you want to use a Speedo, a Blue Runner, a Big Goggle Eye. Those are all great bait choices. Wahoo also like to hang around floating debris, much like dolphin, and they can be caught by trolling deep diving lures or dropping live baits or jigs around and under those floaters. And the few Wahoo that have been caught lately have been under those floaters, especially down in the Miami area. Now, you want to use a piece of wire leader since those Wahoo have razor sharp teeth. And just like most of the other offshore fish, you want to look for blue water with north current fish anywhere from the 100 to 500 foot range range when trolling or live baiting but anywhere you find a floater it doesn't matter if it's in 10,000 feet there's a good chance that a wahoo be under it now i got a photo here this is mandy fruned freen fruned i hope i pronounced that right with a nice wahoo that we caught aboard the thomas flyer last week and that wahoo was under a floating log 
you go. Very nice one. Love that when that happens. Well, tell us about the yes. dolphin. So, I got to get the right page here. <laughs> so, the dolphin fishing of last week has been decent. It just depends on how lucky you get finding the right piece of debris floating. Most of these fish are being caught in around scattered rips. That's where your floating debris is most likely going to be. And any any of these floaters have been anywhere from 8 to 15 miles offshore, but it could be shallower. It also could be deeper. When we do find them, we're catching them on troll baits like Rick Ballyhoo, uh, Bonita strips, also small dolphin lures and feathers. Once we do locate them, we've been pitching live and cut baits to them. And the fish have been a little better size. Most of the fish have been schoolies in the four to eight pounds with the occasional larger one mixed in. Then inshore, we've got a lot of bait moving south along the coast, both off the beaches and also in the ICW. Toward the south end of the region, we're seeing lots of pilchards. And in the north end of the region, there's been pilchards and mullet. So those mullet haven't made it quite down to the Miami area yet. And behind all this bait's been lots of hungry fish, especially snook. So you want to bring your cast net, get some live baits for the well, and then fish those live baits on the outskirts of those bait, bait schools where your distressed bait will be an easy mill. Since uh, a lot of these snook are uh, being caught are over slides, and you got to release them, so you want to make sure we don't hurt them, so try to use some circle hooks. Also following all of these bait fish have been tarpon, jacks, sharks, and barracudas. Got another photo here. This is William Flynn with an overslot Biscayne snook that he caught following the school of pilchers down in South Biscayne Bay. Wow, then nice the one. trout fishing has also improved with all this bait around. You can find sea trout in the one to three pound range and larger anywhere uh, in, down in the grass flats from Venetian Causeway north to Holliver Inlet, which is down in the Miami area. You want to fish with small live baits like pilchers, herrings, pinfish, you want to fish them under a popping cork, or you can use small swimming and twitching lures in green and black, or black and uh, green, and you want to uh, kind of match the hatch. Also, quarter ounce jig heads with gold shrimp, or four inch bass assassins, sea shads, those are all getting bites. Best fishing has been in the four to eight feet of water range on the flats that have good moving water with that bait activity. And on the high tide, the fish, they've been up on top of the grass flats. And as the tide falls, work the potholes and the edges of those flats. Well, that was a great way to wrap it up with that last report for the night, Jimbo. I'm going to take your Black Oak hot spots from the southeast region from here. Look for snook and tarpon feeding around schools of migrating bait fish on the inshore. And then, of course, offshore. Look for a dolphin under the floating debris because they're eating live or cut baits and troll baits. You know what, I put a black oak LED on my four-wheeler and it lights up the trail. I love lights that thing. Lights that up, but yes, I just have one does. question. Black or green? Or, or green, green or black? black. Yeah. <laughs> it matters, maybe. It all works. It all works. It all works. <laughs> as long as it's green or black. Right, all right, well the captains have spoken and a Wahoo Sushi smorgasbord is in our future, but stay with us so we can tell you what's on deck for next week on the Florida Insider Fishing Report. We'll be right back. Next week, we are talking, waiting for our, um, excuse me, gentlemen, I might cry, season finale. <laughs> I know, I know. It's here already, the end of September. My Rick will wallet's be back. already weeping. Mine is too. <laughs> I'm going to miss all your lovely stories, Dave. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining us again. It's been a blast. Jim. You're getting really good at this. And now we're ending. But you know what? There's always next season. There's always next season. Exactly. And there's always our YouTube channel, which everyone can go and watch. Yep. Rigs and techniques, new products, as well as these shows yeah. if they need. And we're going to try to get together and do some stuff in the off season. Yeah. So some adventures. That'll, that'll be some fresh stuff on the YouTube channel. Right. All right, well, guys. Well, thank you for joining in. Go out and catch those wahoo, and we'll see you next week. Bye bye. Yes.